Kirsten. So, good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to be out here proclaiming Jesus Christ. And as you heard from my brother Mac, uh, we're an Acts 2 church. It means that we took Jesus' last command and we make it our first. And we go into the world and we proclaim Jesus. There's a question that started this morning. this morning is Jesus says to his disciples he says who do they say that I am and folks what was he really asking he's asking each one of us who do you say that I am this is a question that's been asked through the age who is Jesus the Christ to you you see folks Jesus Christ is not just a name and a last name Jesus is his name, Christ is his title, he's the anointed Messiah. And as you're hearing us this morning, don't think Christianity started on a pave walk like this. This has been going on since Adam and Eve sinned. Father God had made an arrangement that he would send a Messiah. The Old Testament used a word called the Son of Man. Daniel uses it, Ezekiel uses it. Jesus himself said he's the son of man. So let me tell you who Jesus is. The biblical Jesus, not the man-made Jesus. I'm not talking about the cult Jesus, where Jesus is uh, Archangel Michael. I'm not talking about the Mormon Jesus, uh, where he's a brother to Satan. I'm talking about the Son of God. Folks, as authentic Christians, we believe in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three persons, one God. And Jesus, if you look at your Bible, will tell you, He made everything. He's a creator God. Everything that was made, that was made, was made by Jesus. He's a creator God. And He gives it up. He gave up His majesty, took on our humanity to go about seeking and saving the Lord. Folks, and, and this is why we've come out here, is to proclaim Him. Because... There's only one way that you might be saved. You people are going to a game today. Let me assure you, assure you as immortal man, there's only two places that you can go. Today you're alive, but there comes a day where you'll die. Your body will die. But let me assure you, where are you going? There's only two places. There's either heaven or hell. And in our society, this is, this is counter. People don't want to know about this. This Bible that I'm holding in my hand is the textbook for life. It's the manual for your soul. This is for the God's word to you and me how to live our lives. How to be saved. Saved from what, folks? We live in the Bible Belt. Everyone here is a Christian, but how many of you are going to heaven? Folks, how many of you are serving Him? How many of you are in the world as an almost Christian? Because somehow you said a prayer, you said a prayer at some vacation Bible school, and then you walked away from this God, you've never served Him, and even the Christians who hear us proclaiming tell us we're doing it wrong. So folks, I'm asking you where you are. Who is this Jesus to you? Is He your Redeemer? But you'll see there's lots, there's lots of mockers. The only way you can be saved is by Jesus the Christ. Allah, the moon god, the pagan moon god, can't save you. He's, he's a, a man-made fiction. He's a word for God. But let me tell you, we had people say, I'm a Buddhist. Buddha can't save you. He's dead. We had Roman Catholics tell us that Mary, Mary, Mary was a sinner like you and me. Mary, Mary can't save you. Your Pope can't save you. Your church can't save you. There's only one name given to us on earth by which you can be saved. It's the Son of God who becomes the Son of Man. And He goes about seeking and saving the lost. 
So let me just read you what John the Apostle says about this God. This John's a, a book, the, the Gospel of John is different to other Gospels. He speaks straight into eternity. He doesn't do a genealogy. Let's have a look at the first 18 verses of John. It's called the prologue. It's, it's about the divinity of this God. You see, Jesus is not your buddy. Jesus is a holy, magnificent, mighty God, eternal God, without beginning, without end. Folks, the people who saw him fell down. They thought they were going to come undone. He is so righteous. We can't go into this, his presence thinking we're good and kind and we're so righteous, folks. Let me tell you what it says here. But John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. What's another name for Jesus? The Word of God. In times gone by, Father God spoke to us by angels and prophets. Today He's speaking to us by the Word of God. Do you know this God? Folks, do you read your Bible? Do you know there was a prophet called Amos? He's talking to the northern tribe and he says there's coming a famine. And this famine is going to be on the Word, folks. It's going to be different to other famines. It's not on thirst and hunger. And how many of you, if I had asked you about a call you out and say, Sir, what is the Gospel? What are the Ten Commandments? We know nothing about this God, folks. We mockers, mockers, prove this, this Bible is right. It says, in the last days there'll come mockers. And folks, that's a shame, because we're not your enemies. We're pointing you to the Christ, now that you might be saved. Folks, everything's okay now, but there's coming a time where you'll stand before this God and you'll have to give an account of your life. And folks, don't be foolish. Don't play with your eternal salvation. Eternity is forever and ever. When you've been there 10,000 years, you haven't even begun. Folks, this is this holy God. And let me tell you, if you think my message is rough, let me tell you, the early church never went around saying, Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you. They never did this. They said, repent and believe the gospel. Folks, repent. If you hear a gospel and there's no repentance, you've just heard another narrative like soap, a soap opera. I'm asking you to repent. Do you remember what John the Baptist did? He baptized covenant children and said, repent. Jesus, his first words when John the Baptist is put in prison, what does he say? He says, repent and believe the gospel for the kingdom of God is at hand. Folks, this is this beautiful gospel. And how did we get so ashamed of this gospel, folks? What happened to us in America? Folks, there was my brother from Haiti giving you a special word, telling you with conviction to turn to him. And folks, I've seen so many Caucasian hearts. I'm from Africa. Folks, they're actually ashamed. I was in Canada, folks. Let me tell you, the Spirit moves where it wants to move. If you keep grieving the Spirit, you won't hear from Him. And I'm asking you, folks, we go where the crowds are. We go that you might hear this gospel. Why is that? We want you to be saved. Why is that? Our default area is hell, folks. There's only two places you either can go to, heaven or hell. And Father God sent His Son as a mediator. He, he sent His Son that those who believe in Him can be adopted into His kingdom. Folks, this is the message. It's an awakening message. You gave to a game. This game won't last. But where are you with this God? Do you know this God? Have you picked up your Bible and said, let me get to know this God. Do you know anything about Him? Folks, this is the most maligned book in the world, and yet it's alive. You pick up this book and you read it, and it'll tell you all about yourself. It'll conform you to this God. It'll change your life. Folks, it'll wash you. It'll cleanse you. His Spirit is my brother. He's the Word is His Spirit, and it's alive. So he goes on to say this. He says, all things were made through Him, and without Him was not made anything that was made. So did you know that Jesus was a creator God? He's not Archangel Michael. He's not a brother to Satan. And then he says, 
in him was the life and the life was the light of man folks and then he says this beautiful word he says the light shines the light shines in the darkness and the darkness hasn't overcome it or the darkness doesn't over comprehend it what is he talking about folks what is he talking about he's talking about sin that came into the world sin has so changed us folks it's changed our nature we rage against this god we don't want to know anything about it and it's not a word that you're going to hear in church the pulpit is made preaching the word of god palatable they want numbers folks i can stand here as a street preacher and tell you what's in this bible folks sin has changed us we rage against this god and i'm asking you today i'm asking you to get right with this god i'm not your enemy i'm pointing to a god what i'm telling you is what we've been telling people wherever we go whether it's in prison whether it's in um, las vegas whether it's california folks you know what our problem is it's not between democrats and republicans it's of you and me against god we turned against god's laws we trashed his laws and look what's happened to us so he says this there was a man sent from god whose name was john he came to bear witness bear witness about the life that all might believe through him john wasn't the life he came to bear witness john had never seen jesus he was a forerunner this god ordains everything just like he'll ordain who will be in the white house this god is in charge folks let me tell you you, you mockers are in the bible folks i'm just telling you all you're doing is proving it true and and when we see this we come out of the street and our prayer is that god would breathe over these dead bones those that are so against this god folks that he breathe his holy spirit and you come alive you can understand that you're in need of a savior folks the default is hell and i'm asking you to believe in this god that you might be saved and then he says this the true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world he was in the world and the world didn't know him even though he made the world have you ever thought of that when we look at this beautiful we look at the change of the season we can see the invisible attributes of this god this god is clear to us but we suppress the knowledge of this god because of our sin folks when i look at that building i know there's a builder when i look at paintings i know this this god it's made everything gloriously there's not an atom out of place there's not a molecule nature follows this god it's you and me who don't follow this god and i'm asking you to get right to this god and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us and we have seen glory his glory as the glory of the only one the son of the father full of grace and folks let's rush back we 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 rush back 10 6 to 8 centuries before Jesus before Jesus was came and there was a prophet Isaiah and he prophesied about Jesus you see folks everything that this God has done he sent prophets to warn people just like in our day he's, he sent people street preachers we belong to a group there's 175 of us we go all around wherever there's a sporting event wherever there's crowds and what do we do we ask them to believe the gospel repent and believe the gospel what is the gospel the gospel is about the death burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ that he came as a servant for the father and he's coming back to rule and reign folks there's going to be no sin in his kingdom the first time he came to save those the next time he's coming to deal with sin in man and woman so please understand this the first time you had this word called grace when he comes back it's going to be glory i can't tell you how to be saved you'll come back like lightning folks he's coming back and don't think because it's taken 2024 years since it was first prophesied that he's not coming back this god is slow to anger this god's merciful folks i'm telling you about this god sends this prophet 
And this prophet says this. He says, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. And we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. Folks, listen to this. He was crushed for our iniquities. Father God crushed his only son, son, Jesus Christ, on the cross. If you read the Passion, you'll see the earth went from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock. It was darkened. Father God poured his wrath on his son. And gentlemen, you're older than me. Please repent and believe this gospel. I want you to understand that wrath is for those who don't believe in it. It gives us the power to be adopted. Please don't negate the works of Jesus Christ by your unbelief. Folks, this is the gospel message. The gospel tells us that this is the good news because the opposite of that is so bad where you go. This is the gospel. And then he says this, folks, we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own. So he sends a, prof a prophet to the nation of Israel. Do you think we're any different today, folks? Look at us, how we've turned against him. That this God would send his son, that his son could atone for us. His son could uh, be our substitute. You guys are going to a ball game. You're going to see substitutes. That he became the substitute for us. In essence, the gospel is this. He who knew no sin, our sin was placed on him. And I'm asking you to believe in Him. I'm asking Him that you won't go to hell. You won't die in your sin through disbelief. Folks, this is the gospel, this glorious news that Father God sent His Son. He's the only way that you can be saved. Put your trust in Him. Believe in Him to the utmost in Jesus' name.